Hi, this is Katie Jarvis with Managing the Mess. In this video, we'll be talking about classroom management. And this is part of a larger series that I'm doing. In this video, I'm going to talk about what to do if a student or class is misbehaving in the art room. We're going to talk about what to do if a student misbehaves in your classroom. In my classroom, I go over the art room rules each and every week. This sets really high expectations for students and keeps the rules fresh in their minds. If students need another reminder about the rules after this first uh, practice with the class, I would say to them that's a one. I love this strategy because it takes that power struggle out of me yelling and correcting them. They know this is their first free morning and they have a chance to turn things around. Sometimes I'll even point to the rule and say their name. Often I will say, show me. Show me how we carried the scissors, giving them that opportunity to fix what went wrong. I may say, try again. Go back and try again to get the scissors. Or next time. Next time that you get the scissors, I'd like to see you use your walking feet. These opportunities all keep a very positive interaction with the student, but let them know that that misbehavior has been noticed by you. Now, if a student would do that same behavior again, that's a two or a second warning. Now on that second warning, this is when I elevate things a bit. On my seating chart, I have the student's name here and each number. This corresponds to what seat they sit on. There are boxes where I record their effort grade. When I have already gone over the rules at the beginning of the class and then given them two additional reminders, I lower their effort grade for that day. So I note that there. Inside of my folder, I have a chart where I just have their date, their name, and what happened. So that I'm recording those behaviors, I'm able to look up patterns. I have data on students to share with administrators and classroom teachers and parents. This is very helpful to me when I go to do my progress report. On that second warning, I'm also writing this down on my art support report. Now what this is, is a note that I give to the teachers each and every week. So I fill these out ahead of time with the teacher's name and the date and then what project we're doing because sometimes that has a bearing on what happened in class. I have a list of my rules so that teachers know what those are and then I have a spot where I can write any misbehaviors that occur. On this second warning where I am just collecting that data, I simply just state what happened for the teacher. Sometimes it's an issue that this is behavior that they've never seen before or they can explain to me that something is going on with that student that may have caused that misbehavior, or they can say that they're also seeing a pattern with that. So it's a very good communication piece between myself and the classroom teacher. At the bottom, I have a spot where I circle what class award was earned. So this is the gold, silver, or no paintbrush. On the back of this art support report, I do have my management plan typed out. This is really helpful for students that are new to our building. So they understand that when they're seeing this paper, it doesn't mean that they need to take an action, but it's a very good thing for them to keep for their records. If a student receives a third warning, that is when I would not only note that in my book, and note that to the classroom teacher on the art support, but I would reach out to the family. So I would either send what my district calls a talking point, which is a text to families, or I would send an email, or I would pick up the phone and have a conversation explaining that they had received three warnings in the class. Now, during the class time, I would probably have moved them either to work on the carpet or to move to a different seat within the classroom. We also have a calm down spot that they might have been seated in when this third time uh, warning occurred. Sometimes students will go into the hall for a quick reset or they will visit another teacher or administrator to reset for them to come back to the class. Um, when I'm contacting parents, I'm sure to be very clear about what behaviors happened. I think it's a good thing to let them know that you've communicated this already with the classroom teacher that that information has been shared. Um, I like to state that I'd like them to talk to their student about what happened so that we can all encourage them together to do better next week. That's a really positive statement to end your note on. And it's a very helpful thing to ask students to please let you know that they have received your message so that you know that that information was received and that you can move forward accordingly if these behaviors were to continue. 
explain how I manage the classroom behavior on the whole. So I have a happy and sad board where I'm catching the class doing a really good job and pointing those things out to them, or I'm noticing some undesirable behaviors and I'm letting the class know as well. Now, I like this system because with that one, two, three magic that I'm using for the individual behavior, one or two students, they cannot ruin these points for the entire class. Here's how I would use the happy point. I would say, wow, I noticed that your class came in so quietly and you were already settled before I was even able to do that clap. So I'm going to put up a first point for you guys. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh yeah. And when I point to the students for two seconds, they have a little party. I love the sound because it catches their attention. Hey, we did something good. And I specifically am giving that feedback as to what was so amazing. I try to catch these points a lot throughout the class and really get myself to focus on the positive. I love to give them a point for how did they come in. I love to give them a point for how they did listening during the lesson. I do this for when I notice great things that are happening when they are at their seats and working. I give a point for if they freeze during my cleanup directions, and then another point for cleaning up, and then another point as well often for lining up. I know that some teachers have a specific chart where they earn these points throughout the class, so that's one option of how you could do this. I keep it really flexible so that I can end up giving them tons and tons of points if I choose, or if there's a day when I'm just really moving around and my hands are busy, I'm a little bit lazier about this, the system still works and the kids are not disappointed. When I make a sad mark, they say, ah, and they make a very exaggerated sad sound. I love to really be specific and explain why did we earn that sad sound. I noticed that we were working a little bit too loudly, so I have to put up a sad point. And then at the end, we add up these points. Now, these points correlate to an award that I give to them and I pass back to their classroom teacher called the gold and silver paintbrush award. So if the smiles win on our chart, then the class takes back a golden paintbrush to their classroom teacher. Now the teachers keep these just for that week. And when they come back to art, they bring them back again. I have a little plastic string on each one in a loop. So the classroom teachers can either hang this on a magnet on their classroom board, or they can hang this on their door frame and bring it back each time. Now this works as a very good communication tool so that the teacher knows how the class did for the day. If the score is close, I do not give the golden paintbrush award, but I give a silver paintbrush. So this is like second place. If the frowns win, then the class doesn't take anything back to their classroom teacher. I record this also on a chart, really just for fun and for data. I do at the end of the quarter a ketchup and pickle day, which I'll explain in other videos. So be looking for that information. But that day is just for fun and it is at the very end of the quarter. So it is sort of a celebration of all the gold and silver paintbrushes that a class may have earned, but it's not earned at a specific time. So this is really a lazy teacher uh, way of doing an incentive. I'm not giving out candy. I'm not giving out popcorn parties. I never have to keep track of when did they get that 10th paintbrush because I owe them something like that. Or wow, they made it through the whole year with getting golden paintbrushes. They get something special. It's just something that I do for each and every class to have that ketchup and pickle day where they catch up on their work and they get to pick and choose and have free time. Now, I'm very clear with the students and emphasize this often that if the class earns a golden paintbrush, they end up having more free time at the end of the quarter because I'm spending less time each week reviewing the rules and the procedures. The classes that lose their paintbrush, especially when this happens frequently, I am spending more time reteaching the rules and they are spending more time off task. Therefore, they will have more work to catch up on on that ketchup and pickle incentive day at the end of the quarter.